to merge vertices and merge vertices. Then here we can set a merge distance. Let's try 0 0.1, 0 0.01. Can mess with this value so you get something that works. So this is not working. Undo that. I think we just have to go in by hand and select the edges that we don't need. And I know that some scripts do to select a pattern like this, just don't have it. So usually I like to, to put baffles to keep shading correct, but this one's gonna add so much uh, to the topology by just having that all baffled. I'm gonna prefer to, to just merge that together. Now we should be able to select all that, because this clearly way smaller than other distances, we should be able to merge this. Let's try 0. Point. A point eight, maybe one. Should I stop anything? Taking a bit of trouble. I tried deleting history. Now let's try it again. that I only merge those so there's baffles that seems to be working correctly so point one that took 4k away it is messing up a little bit here Maybe 0 0.08, 0 0.06, or 5. So that's a little bit too low. And now that's all working correctly, I think. Nope. So that's the magic number, I think. Then little ones we can just do by hand. Some stuff here is messing up. I'm just going to get rid of it. Yeah, we're not going to have all this on render anyway. Maybe here we can do another merge. But this time with 0.08. So a good way to test if everything worked is to select loops like this. And if it's selecting all, you know that it merged properly. And if it doesn't merge, uh, if it does select, something merged wrong, which destroys the poly loop. I'm pretty sure this went well. Let's 
that all worked. Still left with a pretty high poly count though. We can delete those, those don't add too much. It's gonna be a little bit of a repeating job though. So I'm gonna record the uh, recording. I'm gonna pause it and then come back when it's ready. So select them all and let's delete. So that's just for okay. Maybe let's avoid it for the top ones. So those are gonna be actually in the render. And even if it was a, a full character for a game, it's still do the same where I leave a bit more resolution to the to the tubes that are near the head. So those are gonna have more focus from the place. So you wanna be very strategical with where and how you put in your poly count. It's very important that we don't just delete an extra edge. We want to actually collapse this edge. So it will take the average between the two. So it will retain the shape of the high poly banner. One we can collapse one more time, which I'm gonna do for the lower ones. alone so we can get a transition from polygon details and ones where we didn't delete an extra edge other ones to where we didn't delete two edges so now we're at 10k so we're getting lower Let's go ahead and cap this. I am gonna do it like this so we can still select loops here and then merge. We can get rid of a little bit here maybe. Let's do a quick test break. Let's go ahead and do modify, unitize. So let's select where we want the seam to be. So this should be at the back, so we don't see it. Now invert and uh, move and seal. to unfold this to nice it out a little bit now we get some very nice looking UVs very fast it's a let's 
get this cut up in multiple pieces for better packing. Again, we can merge this together later if we want to. This one should be in mask too as well. I must like the ambient for this one. It's very easy. There's some that give us an error right there. But I think this works very well. Except for that one, that one's hideous. Let's see which one is that. So we definitely messed uh, something up here. I think that looks pretty well. See, definitely looks a little bit better here because we have more segments. But we're still pretty high. So I still want to clean up a little bit more. Render and they're gonna be close to the face and whatever. And then collapse. You can see that looks a, a lot worse. Get this uh, stepping effect. The final renders will be something like this. I think that's good enough for now and we can always consider lowering, lowering the poly count later. So let's take another look at what's next. So we can hide this one. This one we already have a low for. In the brush, and then we just need to make that one. And this one we can mirror. So I noticed that I accidentally deleted this piece because we're making incremental saves. And I'm showing you this because the importance of incremental saves. Now we can go back to a newest one after copying, then we can just paste it.
then right here we can go here we can just put it back so even though we accidentally messed up by deleting something we can easily get it back and delete all the history not sure why it's getting deleted when we delete this history so now we have that back so just a little uh, reminded to make incremental saves so you never lose anything so first off i do want to apologize if the pacing is going to be a little bit weird from this part as i haven't had time to work on the asset for like two months now so i'm gonna jump back in and see where we left off left off i also want to quickly address this uh, plugin that i'm developing which is gonna help to retop uh, it's not done yet, but uh, the base functionality is here, and I think it's very useful. It's kind of like in Marmoset, how you can quickly disable the high and low. Now we can do it in Maya, and we can do all, so we can retop. We can quickly go through stuff. And then we also have a drop down, so we can focus on one part of the character at a time. So, because we only have three sets here it's not that much but when you have like a very complicated character it's gonna be very nice to work like this so like I said hang on the, the flow is gonna be a little clumpy from here but give me a few minutes to get back into it so the way I usually like to set this stuff up in ZBrush I'll have my bait root so we have uh, three texture sets, one for the helmet, goggles and mask. And then we have four bait groups in the helmet, for example. So then in Maya, I split it up in four groups. And then everything's bound to the low group. And this will be simplified a little bit when I release the, the plugin for, for public, so you guys can use it. There will also be some export settings and all that cool stuff. Uh, some other useful things but I don't have the time yet to script it all but now we can really easily just go into one uh, big group and start editing that usually I, I go into my outline I keep unhiding and hiding stuff and it's just not a nice way to work you'll see throughout the, the course that this plugin is very very useful and handy so I'm gonna go to ZBrush I want to work a little bit on the Helmet 04 group, so just press Helmet 04. Let's take a look what we already have. So we have one piece in here. Let's start with these buttons. Just take the low poly from ZBrush. Let's mirror that. Again, uh, this little plugin is going to be super, super handy, especially when it's uh, actually done all the way. Because I've been annoyed by a lot of stuff in Maya doing retopology. I think there's not a, a good solution yet to the issues. Also working on a, a part where you can automatically import everything that you have in ZBrush. It will create a folder structure for you. So. Whatever folder structure you have in ZBrush, let's say helmet, then you have helmet 01, 02, blah blah, then we'll create a helmet folder, and then we'll import new folders with helmet 01, blah blah, and you don't have to worry about any folder structure anymore in Maya, because it will be all copied from ZBrush. And then the idea is to also have that happen in Marmoset, that you don't need to import and make folder structure because it should all be imported right away from ZBrush and folder structure should be made automatically because right now what I used to do before I made the script I make the folder structure in ZBrush then I make the folder structure in Maya and then again I make the folder structure in Marmoset which just isn't the nicest way to work so you're repeating a lot of the stuff
I'm not sure what I was doing, but I'm missing some low poly stuff, which is super annoying. As you can see here for the buckle, so I'm gonna go ahead and ignore those for as long as I can, because I don't feel like fixing it. Also working on a script to improve workflow between Maya and ZBrush. So keep an eye out for that. It's gonna be related to small assets like this. So right now I just go into the low mode so we don't see any highs. See if I make the UVs already this. Doesn't seem like it. Quick look at these asymmetrical. So it's symmetrical, it's really nice. I'm just gonna delete one of them. <coughs> so first let's get some hard edges going. Just gonna name my stuff for once. Thematic. I think this is my soft. And this should be hot. So let's start off with automatic. You can see automatic does a pretty amazing job one of my favorite features in Maya. Basically gave us all the hard edges that we need without having to do anything. Get rid of that nasty N-gun. So I think when I was doing the retop I couldn't get my tablet to work in Maya. I did find a fix, so if you're having the same problem, you have to go to... Uh, I think script pen and then mapping. Make sure use Windows Ink is disabled. Then everything should work fine for you. stuff going on there. It's another little cool trick what I like to do nowadays. When we go to hotkey, we type a uh, bridge. Uh, control Alt D or whatever. Now I'm gonna show you this because I will be using it in the in the videos going forward. Now if we go to Wacom, we can go to Maya, go to functions, then Maya. Now like put this one on clicks, a keyboard, keystroke, and then put that shortcut that we did, control D. Now I can really quickly with my left thumb just bridge stuff up. So I'm just doing this. Normally I do a shift right click and then bridge. Now I can just get my left thumb and click it and that's it. And it's especially handy when you are working with the pen instead of the mouse. I think that looks about right. It's actually hard edge as well. Got a lot of stuff going on here. Just gonna go ahead and double check in my ZBrush scene what I was doing. I think this in the mask. That's in Helmet 03. You can see how quickly I can now switch stuff. 
So I think we should put those in first. Now copy this and paste. Just quickly check for symmetry. So everything seems to be very symmetric. That one already, maybe? Nope. So one thing that I actually don't like is that we make all these pieces separated. If I were to redo it, I would just make this whole piece uh, one piece. It's geometry. But for now I'm just uh, gonna make everything separated. So I'm obviously not gonna go ahead and change everything that we did. This would be really annoying. Check for symmetry. This is symmetrical. Also wanna add like feature if you're on helmet 2 and you click a uh, button here like add, it will add the, the objects to the current Group. I think that will be very useful. Go ahead to check for EU feasts on this. Nope. So this will be super fast. Mapping planar mapping. I'm going to select every hard edge, edge and cut. And lay out. I also want to add one more that's going to be like an uh, all, all the way at the top, so you can quickly like unhide everything. I think that's lacking. Like I said, I'm in the middle of developing it, and I'm using it a lot before I want to publish it, so I actually find everything that's annoying, and I can change that. I'm not sure why I didn't get the, the lows on these. But I'm sure I must have had a, a reason two months ago. So the easiest way to get that back is to go to ZBrush. And I think we should be able to rebuild the uh, stuff. Strange. Something like that. If you're wondering uh, what script this is, you can find it online. Just uh, do something like Maya, select every or the edge. Super useful. There's a few flaws though, as you can see. Maybe something like that. Let's get rid of that one. And that one. 
a little bit of an error there, so I'm just gonna cut away all that topology. Now we don't need that one. Do like that little dip that we have going on here. Can make that a little bit bigger. Push it out a little bit. So one thing I want to share with you. If you mess up and you get rid of your low, whatever, just uh, sometimes easier just to replace the high. So now from the low we're gonna make a new high that we can just easily place back. That way we'll have the low back everywhere. So I'm sorry if I show the OBS window all the time, it's because I don't have a second monitor anymore. So I should be getting a new one. Mm -hmm. So something like that. Let's go ahead and make this a little bit more low. First let's do a group, let's call this ring. Again, if you have names like this, go to Window, General Editors, Namespace Editor. Just delete and merge with root everything. Like, annoying when you import stuff from ZBrush, it will come with a namespace. And that's how you can get rid of them. There's probably some script out there that you can do that all in one time, but I don't have it. Let's duplicate. Let's call this one high. This one's gonna be low. asset and not too worried about polycount so I'm working a little bit messy because all I care about is uh, a nice render like normally I'd go in here and delete all this stuff that you don't see because it's being covered Reasonable. So now let's unhide it. Let's take this one, let's add some baffles. and let's convert. Also, uh, if you have any cool ideas for the plugin to retop, just let me know and maybe I can add it. So now we're gonna duplicate this. I'm gonna hide the high. Again, even if it's hidden, if you use the, the group to transform, it's gonna be applied. See if we unhide the high will be in the right place as it takes the transformation from the group. I'm gonna move this one in a little bit more as well. So 
so something like that that's not looking very nice so now let's go ahead and take these highs and export them on the ZBrush Go to our ID one. So I'm just gonna delete hidden, make a duplicate, import, and mirror on wealth. Subside that one time and merge down. I guess we didn't make any colors yet. Did really think that we already did the ID map. So I'm gonna figure that out a little bit. So I think I'm getting kind of confused because nowadays I follow a slightly better workflow than I used to. So here we have another file, which is the for big one. And here I have all the ID colors. So I'm just gonna merge this together. I'm sure it used to make sense what I was doing, but it doesn't make any sense anymore to me. So that's always fun. also odd that it's not lining up. Let's check it out if I change something here. Ah, actually this we edited a little bit in Maya so that's okay. So again, I'm sorry that the workflow is a little bit messy. It's just because I didn't touch the project for that long and I don't remember exactly what I was doing at the time. I don't want to uh, cancel the project. So I do think we're pretty far and I want to finish it for you guys. So I'm just selecting everything here. Go to component and I'm gonna pull it straight just to make sure the shading is all good. So now the shading is a lot cleaner. Still have some issues here though. Once the, the Retop plugin is also done, I'll go ahead and make a new uh, tutorial series on a new asset. It's just gonna be a little bit more simple just to showcase the, the tool. Spacing out everything a little bit better to get rid of that ugly shading. The shading doesn't need to be perfect, perfect. I do want it to be a little bit more clean. I'm just gonna go ahead and pull everything in one more time. Just to make sure it's all nice and flat. So that's good. 
good enough. So let's do the UVs. So again, just do mapping, then get the hard edges that we did automatically, and put seams. Not sure why it doesn't let me put a seam. Unfold everything. This is always how you want to do UVs. Start off with your hard edges as like base, and then you can edit it if you need to. So lay out and check if anything needs editing. That looks about fine. This stuff needs to be gone though. I think my workflow was a little bit too messy on this asset, so I do want to apologize for that. The next one will be a little bit more clean. Take a look at how much we actually see. That's okay. That's the one thing I really don't like about making these videos. The, uh, the limited space that we have to work with, right? Like the, the UV editor, it's super annoying to have on the same screen. And we have this. You gotta find a solution to that sometime. So those look okay. Just a little bit more straight. Also gonna make safe now that I finally understand how my scene works again. It's also like the the least optimized way that you wanna work. You definitely don't wanna wait two months to touch your project again. It's gonna be a bad time. <laughs> That's good. So we do have it symmetrical, thank god. So we can just mirror that. Let's take a look at helmet tree. So this one should be all done because we do have everything here. We can also get rid of the highs. Let's actually add them to the group. Helmet 2 should be all done. Actually, uh, I think this one should be in Helmet 3. So this one has UVs and all shading correct. Just quickly check. So, Helmet 3 is all done. And Helmet 2 should be done as well, I think. So all done. Then helmet 4 needs the most work. So those are done. Then we just have these which we lost the low of. I think I must be able to find them somewhere in the project. So I'm going to take a quick look around. So okay, uh, it does make sense now. I have a for, for low Maya, which is not a bad idea. But you can see it's one horrible mess and I still don't have everything I need in here. And we have something duplicated, so yeah. And use this as a wise lesson to work more clean. But again, I am developing a, a plugin for it. To, to work better with the assets in between Maya and ZBrush. 
I think it's pretty much unusable. So I'm gonna go back to our scene. Let's take a look. Um, so helmet 2 is done. Helmet 3 should be done, yes. And this one does need to be mirrored first. So helmet 2, helmet 3. Then helmet 1, let's take a look. We did everything here already. So I do think that's everything. That's great. For one second I thought we didn't do the strap yet. But we did. Because I hate doing anything with depth like this. It's just uh, annoying. Okay, so everything in helmet is done. It's just a helmet for we make this very challenging for ourselves. So let's do this one first. It's gonna recon at the right location. That all looks good now, it has UVs. Let's go ahead and mirror that again. So let's take a look and go from painful, less painful to the most painful. So the least painful one is going to be this one. So maybe for this one we can just do a copy. Let's delete hidden. I really don't understand why we have uh, one low poly and then the other we don't have. It's very strange. So maybe for this one we can just rebuild. So we can, that's great. Then we can just merge. Take them. Just kind of check how it's laying the body. Sometimes it doesn't work in both in. But you have to uh, make it work. Ah, we didn't export the body, of course. Get rid of the body here. Maybe I think one of those. I have to go to the right one. So that's good enough. Do you think I want to uh, baffle this a bit? This is quite uh, low compared to the rest of our model. Going kind of back and forward between my and ZBrush just to see where the hard edges should fall. So 
I think like this will be okay if we make this one hot now. make this one hot that's definitely good enough and uh, one thing that I do want to do I do want to split this up but first let's do the UVs if we uh, use this buckle anywhere else I don't think we did nope, so just worry about this one so I want to have this tiny part move to helmet tree just so we get uh, a really nice clean bake without any artifacts This one more. Just go ahead and like this. And just like that. <coughs> so this part's done, 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 done. So that just leaves these little annoying thingies. Because they look very strange. I really wish I had the, the low poly still for that. So first thing I always try when I do have to remake something is paste it. Keep forgetting that I hit copy, not export. Split hidden. Delete hidden. So now we just have one. Let's try to reconstruct it, and of course, it doesn't work. Hmm. I wish that worked, but it doesn't. I do think we use this one quite a lot everywhere throughout the asset. Let me double check. So yeah, we have them here and over here. Let me check, maybe this one has the, the low poly. Nope. Maybe this one? Nope. That makes it just the more annoying. really messed up on my organizing on that one so let's go ahead and quickly remodel that so I'm just gonna make it live this shouldn't be too difficult This is like my to go to way when I mess my organizing up. I just go with Quattro. Then I block everything out. Then I sketch that petal. And I hope. Uh, if you're following along, you didn't make the same mistake as me. It's being an unorganized mess. As you can see, it really does come back at you. But 
Superman. Sometimes when you're working on the on the high, you're just like, I want to get this done, and I'm gonna work very sloppy and and fast. But yeah, it's not the uh, not the way you should be working. So I think that should do it. Go ahead and take that out. So now we just need to mirror it. bit there. So I'm just gonna model that baffle in already because the topology lines up well. Okay, so now let's see if we get lucky. It's not gonna be too painful to get all this stuff in the right place. So the first thing that I want to try is to, I think we can select this. And we can go to mesh, and then mirror. So yeah, this just doesn't really work nicely as I wanted to. I do think we have to position the pivot before we do it, like that. Now let's try again. we're gonna get anything better than this then Maya's mirror function being really bad now we just do it by hand uh, something like that so now let's go ahead and merge vertex just the distance. Zero point zero one. Zero point one. Just gonna look for it. So that's a little bit too much. And like that. Just hitting three to make sure everything's looking good. Delete that one. So the way I usually like to mirror is just to duplicate the object and position the pivot. Then the right axis just do a minus. For me that just works a little bit nicer most of the times. The only downsides that you have to go ahead and combine it. And of course this is not gonna be perfect. So we do need to go ahead and readjust the height now. Take a look at the high and the low. You can see it's all kind of mismatched. So 
I'm just gonna rotate this slightly into place. We can use the B shortcut for soft select. Just kind of move this better. So now we do need to readjust this a little bit. Just to make sure it's all nice. Now that it's in place, more or less, try taking this one and component and just pull that straight. Now let's rotate that. Just try to place that in the center as well as we can. Well, it's not working too well, so let's do something like that, then let's do a duplicate again. That looks about right. Let's check the height. Like that's close enough. Now I'm just going to take this and let's do a cut, let's delete this, let's do the same over here, it's going to be a little bit less. Go ahead and do the same here, just want to be sure that it's like a, a gap. So now we can mesh combine history. Let's just bridge this up. Or we can use the short key that we set and do it really quick like that. Just delete one. If you do like one in the middle, you should be selecting all and collapsing to get the average. That one. I'm just gonna edit edge flow. That's gonna really average everything out. Now we should have a low poly that's pretty close. But again, it's gonna need some readjusting on the other side. Oh, 
Although we did get pretty close this time. Also, if you want to know how to model buckles really well, I did a whole video on that, so you can find that on the channel. One thing that we can do is we can do mesh conform. It's just gonna try to snap it. This one can be a little bit more in the center. And this is like the, the least favorable way you want to model buckles. Like doing the high poly first and then doing the low poly. Like the low poly should have been done when you do the high poly. So everything's very tight in place. Now it's just going to be a little bit less clean as it could have been. I'm okay with that. I do want to be very careful with stuff like this. You can see this is really pointing out. Most of times you want to get out of sticky. First we need to pull this straight, so component. Just pull that straight and then rotate it. Try to get it as close as we can. This is just going to make sure that the shading is looking nice. Just get it more or less to match up. See, that one's really bad. shape is a little bit closer so you can see it's kind of like uh, back and forward but most of times when you're working with uh, the life surface it's very good to get a, a quick low poly in, but the actual final low it's gonna be a little bit rough because everything's just sticking to things and you don't get as much control as you should want. So usually I do like to refine my low a little bit afterwards. Just get a clean result.
just to get a very nice result as we are working with quite a lot of polygons anyway already Just by doing a slight skill, you can snap those birds right on the surface. <clears throat> you can see how annoying this process is. That's why you always want to have the low already done when you do the high. This is just going to be faster. Maybe it would have even been faster to just uh, remodel this buckle from scratch, but it really didn't feel like it. I think that should work. Let's do a quick look in ZBrush. for this one as well. I think that looks pretty clean. Definitely clean enough. We don't actually need a bevel on both sides. So I'm kind of thinking how we should be unwrapping this. This one, I'll go with a hot edge. And this one should be hot as well. And this one. So you can see how everything unwraps by now. Now that everything is unwrapping right, all we can do is fix the shading, if we have anything to fix at all. I think that's working quite well. Maybe we can just push this edge a little bit to make that a little bit sharper, the gradient. And then these, this should be baffles. So 
a little bit annoying that baffles don't automatically go soft. And just like that we have a low poly. So that's good enough. Let's go ahead and clean these UVs a little bit. So now we have a little bit of stretching, but I don't care, it's going to be a very simple texture, just metal. So I prefer to have some stretching and to have very square UVs, so we can pack them a little bit nicer. Because nobody's ever going to see any stretching here. So let's call this one buckle. Call this one low and I get to get rid of those names. I, I, let's go. I think that should be it. So this one should be on the zero four. This is another like, trick for the plugin, just uh, when you have your bake, you can switch between high and low, just to kind of get a really clear ID. If you baked everything well and everything shown up and whatever, you can really quickly see if you missed some part. Right now that I'm toggling between these two, you can clearly see that maybe here we, we need a little bit more Apology. I think it's about the right everything. So if I want to, it's all in the as well. You need to replace some of the new stuff. Entry. I don't have to hide it in this one. Now I'm forced to have everything. It's long now. Take a seat, we're matching everything. Do some split this one up. Do remember to do this one entry. Just so we'll have a nice clean break. Later this will be updated in plugin, that you don't need to make like lace for helmet, everything will just be with a second drop down, one for all the parts, so helmet, mask, goggles, and you have like a second drop down here which will display the subfolders, that's uh, an update for later, but just know that it's going to come, it's going to make everything even more nice. Let's get one of the UV sizes. Gonna get. So get and then set. It's gonna make all the UVs the same size and layout. See, these are awful UVs. Check these little things out. So those definitely have some sort of issue. I guess the issue is that they don't have UVs. UVs to stuff like this, super easy, planar mapping. <coughs> Hot edge. And cut. So 
so we do have a slight error in the mesh and this is like a great example very often when you do your UVs you will notice that you have some final uh, mistakes in your mesh those will just uh, show themselves when you're doing the UVs that's when you can start to take them out so let's do the same here automatic poly soft and put it to 81 check that out it's all looking fine so again uh, select the hot edges and cut hot edge cut Now let's uh, duplicate them again and scale them minus one. Don't forget to freeze the transform. So now we can take the helmet again. lay out still have some UVs that are looking quite strange so that's strange just gonna undo that guess we still have to cut of the old hard edges so that's looking right So now we should be getting a good layout. Let's check. Let's show what's happening. Let's try to delete all the history. So I think we have uh, the old one. And this one's the new one. So that's working. And you can see how we are troubleshooting our mesh based on UVs. Because this is like the easiest way to tell if you have mistakes because everything's laid out nice and flat. So that's all looking okay. I'll try to get a little bit bigger UV space. It's going by like five. That's not working. because of this one being too long mm -hmm. all right so let's just go with some pretty bad test UVs so I did mess up that I was using. 
I'm just gonna get rid of them. Again, that's gonna be refined in the plugin. For now, I'm just gonna do a, a really quick one. Ah, so we did split all of them. So let's do them one by one. I really dislike the, the Maya browser. Let's copy this. And helmet one. Make sure this is turned off. That's what. So now let's copy all this. So let's do a select 9C1. It's just going to deselect everything. You don't need these results, but it's just the quick quicken it up so let's check everything's working it's exporting let's call this one helmet but again this is all gonna be part of the plugin so you don't need to set this up every single time as it's very annoying and that's why I'm making this So everything seems to be baking fine, except for some issues. So this looks strange. Let's go check it out in Maya. So Maya, that looks fine. But then we have these pieces, which are looking very odd looking weird and this one so the way we troubleshoot baits I think it's important to show you this part as well so we can go through fixing issues so the first thing I would do is take everything from the texture set open the UV editor let's just take a quick look at the UVs First thing I'm actually going to try is to just repack. And give this a little bit more edge padding. Let's put this at like 48 and 48. Bit excessive. Let's put it to the 4K preset. So that's looking fine. I'm just going to do a new export. So the reason why I do this is just to be sure that we can do a rebake and to see if everything is working correctly. But we're probably still going to have those issues. You can see that didn't fix it. First thing I want to fix is that transform. The way the reason why it looks very strange is because it has a transform you that zoom, but that's not the case. It's gonna try to freeze transform on all delete history and do an export again. So this is like the fun part, right? Troubleshooting issues. Disable that normal map. Really not quite sure why it looks so strange. I think that might be an issue with Marmoset itself. It almost seems like the, the cage is messing up. I 
One thing that we can try is just re-importing that. So let's see if that fixes anything. See that we're still getting the same issues there. Ah, okay, so the parent has transformed. So after freezing the transform on the parent, let's do a new export. And let's check it out. So now that's looking normal. And the issue that we have with the normal map itself. This seemed to have fixed itself, I think. Oh no, it's because the bake's not applied. So we imported it again. Match those fix itself. Sometimes you gotta re-import stuff and see if it works. Hmm. So they seem fine in Mama set, but in Maya they seem odd. Can open up the UV editor. So that would explain the issue. We don't have UVs for them. Just strange, as we overlook them. Let's just quickly give them some UVs. So again, we just select them all, do a planar mapping. We select the hard edges and cut. That one has UVs now. And again, most of the times, uh, bake issues, they're pretty easy to fix. Just gotta kind of check everything, what is missing or wrong. And the more often you fix bake issues, the, the easier it will get. Because at some time, at some point, you just start to recognize the issues and why it's happening. I'm gonna lay that all out. And again, I'm not worried about destroying my UVs, re relaying them out. Because at this point, we're still just kind of checking if everything works for the bake. We don't have uh, final proper placed UVs yet. I don't want to do this at this point yet. So everything's really easy to, to adjust and to test. And you can see I'm focused on one issue at a time. First we fix the buckle, then we fix the buttons, and then we fix this thing. If we try to fix everything at once, it can become a little bit overwhelming and can be a bit more difficult. So just going issue by issue can help. So we getting some strange thingies here. So we can go to the low, kind of check that cage. So that's a clear issue. We don't have the helmet zero for low in here. Ah, so we forgot to replace that. So now if we bake, that should be looking fine. So you see that issue seems to be fixed check Maya. Again, you want to check how the bake looks in Maya, not the mama set, because Maya is a lot more reliable. So that leaves the most complicated issue for last. Besides that, we're not getting any issues. Everything's looking good and fine. So what's happening here? So the first thing at 
guess is that there's a problem with the shading. The shading looks fine. So one thing that we can try is uh, mesh display unlock normals. See how that looks. Then just soft. Let's select those UV edges. I'm only worried uh, to fix one because we can just uh, mirror this again. So then I'm gonna harden edge this again. Let's do another export. I don't think that's fixed it, but we're just gonna check. So I'm not sure what's going wrong with this. So we can do another bake. So that didn't fix a thing. So next thing I will do is uh, check out the high. See the high is looking a bit strange. I think it has the wrong material apply, maybe. Default high. So there's definitely a problem within the high itself. So let's go to ZBrush and check that out. So here we can see the issue we have a low poly in here still so that one's correct it can be a little bit annoying just gonna group those together like that and delete hidden also not the cleanest height I've ever made but I think it will work fine yep so that's been profit anyway that's a little sloppy actually that's okay I'm gonna resave always when you make like a, a little change like this just make sure to save again because if you ever need to reopen this file to fix another little thingy you're gonna forget that you can delete the low and whatever so just keep making new saves all the time I'm gonna export So that should fix all the issues that we're facing. Let's go to mom set. See that looks normal now. Let's hide the high and back. And that looks great. Now we fixed all the issues, everything seems to be taking fine. So now that we finished off the helmet, except for the final placement of the UVs, I want to keep that for later. Let's decide if we want to work on the, the mask or the goggles. So I think I'm going to finish off the goggles first, because they're a little bit further.
So let's take a look, let's see what we still have to do. So I think we're pretty much done with this, except for that we have to merge them together and to fix the symmetry problem here in the middle. Check out those UVs. So first let's do the UVs. So we have some nan um, I say that non-manifold edges. So we can go to let's also delete uh, the symmetry. Let's see, I'm actually just going to do a new unwrap to fix that. So we didn't really do anything yet. I'm holding down tab to quickly draw out a selection. Just keep adding quickly with tab. And let's map that out. Now we should be able to just unfold, that's working fine. Maybe we can make an extra cut right here and connect that up. Unfolding fine. Take a look here. Maybe I'll also cut this. Just gonna make a quick cut, see how that unfolds. If we cut there, we have to extend that cut all the way up. A little issue there. So I can just delete that. And let's refill that. Now that's working properly. So that's something else, very often when you're doing the UVs, you notice little issues like that. You can fix them at this stage. Not sure yet if I want to put like a whole UV seam over here. I don't think we're gonna do that. Let me just move and seal this up again. Then we leave it like that. So obviously we do need to fix this one. Control to edges, and I'm using the right click to edge parameter and make this a hard edge. We should take one of these edges and just cut it. I think that works. little bit of uh, stretching but I don't think it's too much because you need to remember this part is gonna be metal it's really not gonna have like a, a detail like leather which is very pattern like metal can be a little bit more stretched out because you're not really gonna see it anyway UV stretching that way we can keep the UVs a little bit more simple 
just gonna help all the things out again same story for this you can get some stretching in here it doesn't really matter Let's see, that all looks fine. So we need to do a new one for the goggles. focus on the second group we don't have anything in here yet so yeah once again my unstructured workflow for this project is really biting me in the ass because i'm losing quite some work here and there it's not quite sloppy i should have done that better because we have baffles everywhere to keep the high good but now we cannot really use it with the low we can definitely reuse these i think so i'm gonna copy them let's just quickly check out if we didn't have anything else maybe in this one Again, losing some work. But again, working on plugins to organize that all better. But I think we can reuse this. that hmm not sure about reusing the glasses because the topology is so different prefer to have that all match so let's first focus on this part go back to goggles too This one, the low group. So I do think that's all symmetrical. So we can quickly test if it's symmetrical. I just uh, doing a simple mirror and weld. You can see only the details change. That means it's symmetrical. So the first thing we can do is take this piece, just delete one part of it, so we only need to focus on one. See just how badly this was built, it's just built with the high in mind. So that's a mistake that I used to make a lot. Now when I build stuff, I'm, I'm building the low poly basically first. First let's do the easy stuff. Gonna be matching the curvature. Let's 
so the first thing that we can get rid of is this whole thingy you can just bake that down see it's a very small detail I must say it's gonna be easier to rebuild this, but let's not. So the one down here needs to merge up to that piece that's gonna go in here. So we can leave that as a hole for now. Then this one. We can just extrude this out a little bit. Give it some depth. Then we just merge that. So for low polish you don't really want to work with uh, three edges in a bevel, it should just be two. The third one is pretty much a waste of poly count. Just delete that. It, it's only gonna collapse into there. We can just give this a hard patch. Which let's first soften everything. Then give this a hard edge. Check out if we have a hole there. So we don't. Go ahead and display this hard edges. We need to extend out to here to make the UV cut. And we can collapse those. Maybe not that one. Let's go ahead and apply the Lambert material. mistake here we cut it to this uh, to see where I need to cut I'm literally just uh, going here then where I have my pointer put my finger on the screen and I go to cut position it I just control click 
and make a cut. So we take a look now, see it's pretty precise. We do need to adjust that a little bit. Soften that one out. Let's go to all. Could have just done that instead of putting the finger. So like that, that's matching pretty well. So we still got an issue there. Let's clean this up a little bit. Transform edge slide. Go to solo mode for this piece. Slide it on the edges. This doesn't need to be perfect. Just get it to look a little bit more clean. Then we have an edge here that doesn't add any shape and doesn't help the shading at all. So we can just collapse. See that stays the same. I think we collapsed the wrong edge there. So you can see shading still looks good. like the final fixes for this one then we can start worrying about merging that together <coughs> so think about where you want the uv cut to be that's going to be on this one i'm gonna put one here actually to make this a little bit more clear before we start getting rid of baffles and whatever we're just gonna to the UVs really quickly. So the way that I kind of clean up my stuff, if I have a double baffle like that, double baffle refers to having a baffle for the shading on the front, and having a baffle for the shading on the back. That's what I mean when I say double baffle. You can just map, plain map. And this is what I do in my head, that you don't see, but I think about it. I'm gonna visualize it to make it more clear. So right now, if we do a soft, everything looks good, the shading is correct. But then we need to worry about our UVs. So when I unfold this, we get something very weird. Just because we don't have edges, uh, UV seams. So to unwrap this, I would take this edge. And I would put a cut right here. rid of that edge slide and now we can move that now we have two pieces that unfold fine and the more you do uvs the, the easier it's going to be to 